An 88-yard drive just prior to the half as Indianapolis leading as the third quarter is about to begin. Jim Nance along with Phil Simms. And the Cowboys had their chances again. They had five drives into Indy territory. Come up empty. Well, Jim, when you look at the game, it's very physical. When a game is physical, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to look good. You're going to have penalties and turnovers, and that's what we've had here in the first half. All right, in the first half, some of the numbers, the turnovers, five and all, three by the Colts. Manning picked once, two fumbles as well. Cowboys coughing it up once, and Harper with a pick as well. This game again brought to you in high definition television. And it'll be the Colts, the first to handle it in the second half. And the Jets kick goes to Wilkins. Dangerous return man is stopped right away at the 27. Well played down the field by Ryan Fowler. Now Manning comes out and pretty amazing action here to start the second half on the season in nine games that first possession of the second half he's driven them down the field six of the nine times for a touchdown that's best in the league they were best in the league last year with eight drives for touchdowns coming right out of the locker room in the third quarter Jim they take the information that they've been given in the first half and they know how the defense is going to play all their formations and so they adjust they got a lot of talent that's why they're successful on those first drives in the second half and Moorhead to the left, Rhodes in the backfield, Harrison and Wayne to the right. It's Rhodes. And dancing on that sideline with Wayne blocking, Jake Scott blocking, it goes for four. The third quarter, talk about scoring differential on the season. This has been second best in the league. But, you know, overall, scoring differential on the season, even though the Colts are undefeated and the Cowboys have lost four games, the Cowboys are plus 76, even better than Indy on the season. They've won. When they've won, they've won in blowouts. Every one of the Dallas wins this season by a minimum of 17 points. Over the head of Clark. 3rd and 6 on the way. You're actually seeing some different stuff from the Indianapolis Colts today. They're moving their receivers around. They put Reggie Wayne in the slot much more. That gives him more room. He can go inside, outside much tougher to cover a really good receiver when they're inside. Quickly back to the line. Is where you see him lined up at left end. Puts all hands on deck. Pass in traffic and it's intercepted by Burnett. That's Kevin Burnett with the return. And Burnett is bounced out. Now they say he's in. Touchdown. Cowboys with the interception and run back. There's pressure on Peyton Manning, so you got to get rid of it quickly. The big question is, is he going to be called down? I don't think so. Well, if there's any kind of contact out there with Marvin Harrison, who was the intended receiver, and this is something that could be challenged. Dungey lost a challenge in that first half. And that's something you might want to take a look at. But it's official now. Vander Jack through that right side adds the point after the tie of the game at seven. Bouncing around. And there was contact with Harrison. Oh boy. Peyton Manning chagrin through the ball. Over to Marvin Harrison, bounced around into the arms of Burnett. There was contact. We'll be examining that again. Would he have been down? Should it have been challenged? The game is now tied at seven. Wilkins, just a minute ago, returned the second half kick. 
And right back again out to the 31 this time. And Burnett makes the tackle after having the run back. Burnett catches the football. Possession. He does touch Marvin Harrison. That would make him down. Of course, we got the... It took a couple replays before I could see it. Tony Dungy must not have gotten enough information from the coaches upstairs to challenge. If he would, he would have been down where he caught the where he fell down after the interception. Would have been back at the 39. Instead, put the seven points on the board. The pass rush did it, though. It made Manning get rid of the football very fast. With a dive, running it left side. Cutting back and falling forward for four. That's the first interception returned of a Peyton Manning pass since October 2003 when Rondé Barber returned one for a touchdown. Well, very seldom do the Colts, when they throw the football, take any chances short and outside. When he gets intercepted, usually Peyton Manning, it's trying to make a big play, throwing it deep down the middle. It was roughly 1,500 attempts ago. Second and six, a dive picks up the blitz of Ware. And the pass in and out of the arms of Wayne. Jim, you had talked about a couple, the last time we did an Indianapolis Colts game, we talked about Joseph Adai. Watch him right here. DeMarcus Ware, the best pass rusher on the Cowboys, and it is a stoning cold as soon as they made contact. Coming out of LSU, that's one of the reasons why they drafted him because he could do everything. That was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Coach said, Coach Dungey told us, with any situation, he's always at ease, never frazzled. Manning throws, completes for the first, Reggie Wayne. Manning now, three of his last 11 with that completion. Good protection it allowed Peyton Manning that extra look down the field. And the longer a quarterback gets, the, the farther a defense separates. So the throwing lanes get easier, easier to see, good decisions, and an accurate throw. That 12-yarder puts Wayne over 5,000 on his career. And it's a die for three. Joseph Adai, Al Singleton, the tackle. Joseph Adai telling us one thing about this time of year, if you win a game starting in November, you get a little added bonus. Not in the check, yeah. <laughs> but in the in the rest category. You get two days off instead of one if you win. And that, you know, that's big stuff. Getting two days off. You're getting tired. Tony Dungy, starting November, you get Monday and Tuesday completely off. It's good to get away from the game sometimes. Second and seven, right at the midfield, Mark. They see Ware over there on that side. He's picked up, pass in and out of the arms of Wayne. Jason Ferguson, though, able to bust up the middle and apply a little heat. Yeah, that was a well-disguised blitz by the Dallas Cowboys. And Reggie Wayne, that football went right through his hands. And I got to believe, it looked like to me that it went through his hands because he was expecting contact as he was going up to make the catch. Third down and seven. Newman was threatening to blitz. Little audible by Peyton. And that pass influenced again by the pocket pressure applied. Jason Hatcher busting up the pocket. Well, they talk so much about it. Can they get pressure on Peyton Manning? He fakes to one side. He's looking to go deep down the field to his tight end. And Hatcher, Bill Parcell said I, he was kind of anxious to see how he would come through today, replacing Greg Ellis in some of those passing situations. So far, he's it's been a great day for him. It's Patrick Creighton, the return man, back at the 10. And Hunter Smith. this one go and unable to 
chase it down. And it was Hayden trying to run there in time. It'll come out as a touchback to the 20. Net of 30 yards on the punt. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 41. Comfort suites by Choice Hotels with free savory starts breakfast. And by Red Lobster. Indulge in all the irresistible shrimp you want. It's endless shrimp only at Red Lobster. At the website NFL.com, Pro Bowl balloting is in full swing. It's in your hands. You can vote for your favorite players today only at NFL.com. Romo and the Cowboys, first possession of the second half. The three receiver formation. Creighton the additional wide out. Turns to the sideline, trying to get away from Jason David. But they had tried to make a play on that, but Owens pulled it down. How about Robo? What you've seen so far? Well, just like that last play, he's adapted very well to this Indianapolis defense. And what I mean by that, drop back and get rid of that football quick. Even on that long play before halftime, he didn't wait long. Got out, got outside the pocket and gets rid of it because he knows this is unlike any other defensive line he's faced. They're faster than he is. That Hoyt in there as a fullback. Julius Jones getting the carry. He tripped up right away. Rob Morris stepping up and making the play. He's in for bracket today. Former four-year starter here and former first rounder by way of BYU. I think one thing that's probably caught the Cowboys off guard, which is thrown a a wrench into a lot of their plans on offense. I know they expected to have some runs, some big runs, because everybody gets them against the Indianapolis Colts. And look what they've done today. 40 yards. 40 yards rushing. Second down, we'll call it nine. Colts usually give up one or two 40 yard rushes a game. Not really. Just, no, so it seemed like that. But this pass intercepted in and out of the arms, dropped by Marlon Jackson. Dwight Freeney absolutely nailed Tony Romo. That's what errant passes are almost always the result of getting hit or throwing it before you're ready as a quarterback. And Dwight Freeney, Creighton has no chance to get there. It is right in the hands. Marlon Jackson. And Marlon Jackson, yep. he can't make it. Starting today for the injured Bob Sanders out with the knee. Drafted as a corner. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Played so well at safety. Tony Dungy says I think his uh, future might be as a safety. Third down and nine. Oh. 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 to Clayton. And he's wrapped up quickly. Nick Harper denying the first down yardage along with Cato June. Well, that's what they thrive on. Get you in a third and more than seven yards you got to worry about the pass rush you throw it short they're very good tacklers the Indianapolis Colts their defensive backs gives McBriar a chance to show off his leg for the first time today his first two punts just trying to pooch them inside the 20 and this is what we're talking about right here it sails all the way to the one and bounds in for a touchback 63 yards. That's the seventh time this year. He didn't want it to go quite that far. Out to the 20 for Peyton and company. Lance Barrow producing. Mike Arnold directing the whole crew on hand. Tied 7-7. Manning rolling out and just getting rid of it. Bobby Carpenter, the rookie first rounder, who was racing after Peyton. And you know all about Bobby Carpenter. You played with his father. Yeah, I played with his father, Rob. He was a running back, and Carpenter, first-round draft pick from Ohio State, hasn't seen a lot of action, but they like him in there in past situations. Pretty good at putting pressure on the quarterback from the outside. His father, the former running back, not only with the Giants, but with the Oilers as well. Second down and 10. 
And it's Rhodes tiptoeing past the first traffic and getting out within a yard of the first, but a flag down. Dylan Gandy with a key block. Could be a face mask call. Well, there's no doubt about that. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 56. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Brady James and Fraction will put the football out near midfield. Yeah, good. You said it, Jim. Good blocking up front. James gets a hold of the face mask, doesn't let go, turns the head. That is 15 yards at its finest. And you're one that doesn't think it always should be 15. Well, they, the face mask, they do have differences. The one we're trying, I'm saying, is roughing the quarterback. They need to go 5 and 15 when it comes to roughing the quarterback. Second personal foul on Dallas today. Play action, Manning up top. And that's Wayne getting free in the secondary for 17. See, a little different for the Indianapolis Colts. From the inside, they got Reggie Wayne. Usually that's like Dallas Clark or Ben Utek, a tight end. The, the Colts, with Brandon Stokely being out, they're lacking a little speed, trying to get vertical inside. So putting Reggie Wayne inside is taking care of that. Cowboys, of course, had that big 15-yard face mask call at the end of the Washington game. That bizarre finish that went to the skins on the last second field goal. Manning down the sideline, and that was in the area of Marvin Harrison. But Reggie Wayne also floating around. We'll give Henry the coverage. Well, he was trying to throw it behind Marvin Harrison, but Marvin Harrison thought that he had Anthony Henry beat, so he was going deep all the way. Here the Colts find themselves in another tight one. A little different story than a year ago, isn't it? Manning talking about how his guys have grown up in a hurry with close games, but never a panic around here. He says the wins, we've been able to draw on all these close games. It's been good for these first and second year players not to think that it's always just that easy. Particularly as you see Rhodes to the 33, the second year players who last year just went through you know the regular yeah. season schedule by and large with big win, blowout wins week after week. I like how Peyton phrases it. This is the real NFL, yeah. where every week it's tight and it's close. And the Colts have been in them, and it's really served them well. They do not get nervous, they don't panic. Tony Dungy thinks in the long run, in the playoffs. They'll take advantage of all this experience. It's third and four. Zero panic is how Peyton phrased it. At any point, just a business-like demeanor. And here it is again as UTEC gets enough for the first. And Anthony Henry shaking up. So many times, another formation by the... Colts, UTEC delays, comes out late, but so many times, defenders chasing the guy who has the football, they hit each other. Like Roy Williams and Anthony Henry colliding with Henry shaking up. We'll take a break here at Texas Stadium. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Toyota. Moving forward. And by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite, always a good call. First down and 10 for Indianapolis at the Dallas 28. The play action, the pass to Rhodes, the man he faked it to, and Rhodes picks up another first down near the 15. Well, I think the Indianapolis Colts have found something they really like. Deep drop by Peyton Manning. Everybody running down the field. You get the defenders, give enough space, you dump it off to Dominique Rhodes, and he can pick up the first down. Moving inside, seven minutes to go in the third at 7-7. Anthony Henry is back in there after being shaken up. And that's Rhodes cutting to the outside. Newman, though, able to stop any further advance. Good play that time by Newman. Well, good play by him, but the offensive line of the Colts 
is starting to get a little push on the big defensive line of the Dallas Cowboys. Rhodes, who was born in Waco, has a home here in Dallas and plans to retire in Houston and has about 40 tickets accounted for up in those stands today. He's out now. A die replaces him on second down and five. run near another first I get it I could hear that from up here I would that's what you call downhill running uh, the only way I guess I can phrase that if you're running downhill you're fast and out of control almost that was contact with Keith Davis and a die will stay in the game first and goal we introduced you in that first half to his great friend Lawan Moore who happens to be sitting in this end zone right behind the goalposts Manning and going in finding Dallas Clark for a second touchdown pass for Manning in this game Peyton Manning learned the last time they tried to run it with Joseph Adai they lost a couple yards then he threw the interception the next play but the Cowboys on the blitz here they come one on one and Dallas Clark just makes a nice fake inside and freezes the defender and he is wide open for the touchdown so Vinatieri will try to add the extra point that was Roy Williams defending and the Colts, that kick is good Dallas is down seven after Dallas Clark hauls in the touchdown. Well, Dallas Clark was the target member in the first quarter. Manning got picked off by Roy Williams. They go back to that combo again, and this time Manning able to connect with Clark for the score. Jim, same look, a little more experience because they got some knowledge. The Colts do, they take advantage of it. Austin on the return and he dives across the 30. What did you see on the touchdown, Phil? Well, Jim, you remember Peyton Manning told us when you get inside the five, Bill Parcells is going to make you throw it. So look at everybody coming on the blitz. Here's Dallas Clark one on one. So Peyton Manning says, Well, if you're going to make me, I guess I have to. So look at the space. That is too tough. For Roy Williams, a safety. If he's got, if you're going to do that to him, he needs to get right up on the receiver and beat him up at the line of scrimmage. Now I'm coaching. You'd be a good coach. I got all the answers. There is Jones written down by Gilbert Gardner. Gain of about seven. seeing that old uh, coach player interaction that's <laughs> still ever present. You only like it for one reason because I have to sit there and be quiet as he picks on me. He kills and it. you're over there taking notes. Yeah, Ooh, that's so a good one, Bill. Thanks. Much. Thank you. <laughs> Jones, first down out to the 45. For example, Parcells in practice. Romo. Sims used to do that same dumb stuff when he was young. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> hey, okay. Sims, you're wearing glasses now, huh? Sure wish you were wearing them back when you were playing for me with the Giants. <laughs> yeah, he always gets, I have to wear reading glasses now, and he thinks that's so funny. And he calls you Philip. Well, that's better than what he called me when I was playing. But he did call you in a press conference this week, the great <laughs> Jones getting some good rhythm going here on these runs. And he is knocked back by Marlon Jackson, but not until he gained 11. And Mark Colombo with a big block on that one. Well, this is really what the Cowboys probably expect to see the offensive lineman and Hoyt, the fullback, pulling. The New England Patriots had great success running the football against this Colts defense, moving guys, trapping them and catching them off guard it hasn't worked all day for the Cowboys until that last play and the Cowboys 
Getting a little confidence going on this series. That's Terry Glenn for the first time. Jason David defending. By the way, we dug into the archives a little bit here, partner. Just to refresh everyone's memory. Here's a game against the Colts. Your pass a little steep. <laughs> You're going to come back in here. Yeah, but he, he, he got me, you know, he sit down and shut up. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not proud of that, but that's the way he coaches, Bill Parcells. He allows players to voice their opinion sometimes. And... As we saw him there, that was a little makeup attempt. A short while later, and then Jones is about three yards shy of the first. Rob Morris with a sure-handed tackle. But you know, Jim, when you talk about Coach Parcells, there's so many things that come up. The T.O., Terrell Owens be here, being here, how's he handling him? Everybody expects the blow up, but the one thing he does, just like a father would if he had a bunch of children, you got to treat them all different. you got to judge their personalities and find a way to work with them to get the best out of them. And that's what has made him such a successful coach with three different teams, is that he knows how to manipulate his players. Third down and short, the guy first. Terry Glenn, he is a master psychologist talking about Parcells, really a genius in knowing how to read people in this career, his fourth season with the Cowboys, second most wins for active coaches, only behind Schottenheimer, three Super Bowl appearances, including two wins with the Giants, also took New England to a Super Bowl, it's a Hall of Fame career without any question. And the Cowboys got an excellent drive going here, mixing it up with run and pass. Jones, Cowboys with what has to be, to this point, their best looking series of the day. Oh, absolutely. It is, Jim. They're, like I said, mixing it up. That's what you want to do against a team that's fast, aggressive. And a lot of times you go, well, why did they do this earlier? Well, it, it, it is true. It becomes much easier to move the football as the game goes on, as the defense tires out a little. And that rush defense starting to bend a little bit. Pretty stout first half performance. But Jones starting to expose it a little bit now. Gets the corner and steps out near another first. Colombo helps seal the side. Yeah, he did. Mark Colombo, 75, the right tackle, makes turns back and makes a nice block on Rob Morse. Well, I tell you, Jones may have stepped out just shy of the first, I and mean, he was walking right toward the marker, running right toward the marker. And well, they, they marked him short. Yeah, they did. And a half yard shy, and we're in the closing seconds of the third quarter. This is when they bring in Barber, short yardage. Third down back as well. And let's see what the Cowboys can do. They go with Barber, and he is hit quickly, but squeezes through there. Let's see where they place it. Cato June and Robert Mathis trying to close off the inside. Time has expired in the third quarter, and Bethea a little shaken up. We'll be measuring and we'll be starting the fourth quarter when we come back. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The fourth quarter is going to begin with a big fourth down play on the way by Dallas. They are inches shy of the first at the Indianapolis 19. Jim Nance and Phil Sims with the Colts leading it. In situations like this, what is happening in this league a lot of teams do something that's a little deceptive. Either go outside, fake it inside, pitch it to the running back going wide. Romo trying to sneak for it. And Hoyt, the fullback, falls on his quarterback, and they're going to give him the spot they needed for the first. And the deception that time was, did you watch Tony Romo before the snap? pointing out all this stuff. Yeah, you block him, you do this. They send somebody in motion, then they quick snap it, and he was able to fall forward. So good job by Tony Romo. The 
with Parcells. How many fourth down situations do you think he's had to sit over there and suffer through in his career? How often did he call your number on a fourth and inches with the snake? Not many. And, you know, we just didn't do it because we had big running backs, especially when we had O.J. Anderson. My gosh, he was a pulling guard. He could hit a pile moving forward. Go ahead and measure for it anyway. They have it by a full football. First and you know, Jim, is, since I've been out of the NFL, back then it was easy to pick up those situations. Now it's become almost an art form. It's tough because the defensive linemen have learned how to go under and, and defend you so many different ways that you have to be a little creative. Owen so dangerous down in the red zone. He's lined up to the left. Decisive size advantage. He's going to go right instead. And it's Terry Glenn who's been big on this drive with a now collection of three receptions. You know what they're doing, Jim? Watch Tony Romo. One step back and throw. It's not three steps where the defensive lineman can read it, the defensive backs. It's so quick that there's uh, it enables him to get rid of the football and the defensive back doesn't react to the wide receiver if he was taking the normal three step drop. Down and three and Jones first in the head for another first. Into the arms of Gardner. Quick snap by Tony Romo again. That's part of being an NFL quarterback. Manipulate the defense. Keep them off balance. Cowboys third best point scored inside the 20. Romo, who got a strong indicator that Bill Parcells would be going to him at some point in the season, went back there in the preseason against Seattle. He went the entire way, which is very rare these days for anybody to go the entire way in the preseason. He said, that was the time where I really started to get it, how to prepare. My confidence soared. He's got a first and goal to go. And nothing going this time. And a loss of two for Julius Jones. Yeah, I think you're right, Jim. That's when Tony Romo, that's what he told us the other day on Friday. He says, that's when I knew after that that I could get it done. And, and he goes, it's been a tough process. You know, his fundamentals, how he throws the football. He goes, I've had to change my release. It was too low. I've gotten it higher. So my footwork was awful. And they've stayed on him. And he learned, as Bill Parcells said to us, and you mentioned earlier, he learned a lot about preparing as a quarterback because Vinny Testaverde was here, who is a meticulous getting ready for the game guy. Second and goal. Cowboys trying to tie this up. Romo hands it off, and Jones was clipped by the ankles. No gain. And they didn't like that call here at Texas Stadium. What gave it away? <laughs> They've been well, the vocal. Booze? That's well, the booze that came out after the Vanderjet field goal miss at the end of the first half, his second miss of the game. You know, I used to have brothers that used to come to the game when I was playing. I always loved it. They go, oh, we were calling every play from the stands. Really? You know, when it's third and ten, I could have guessed past myself. So, <laughs> it's always easier in the armchair quarterback. Timeout called by the Cowboys. Well, the Cowboys have third and goal. They have held the football on this series. Eight minutes, 20 seconds. That's their longest drive this year. 15th play of the drive coming up. Ron Meeks, the defensive coordinator for the Colts. Boys load up that left side. Barber in the backfield. And send Barber out of there on a second cue. Robo flames end zone intercepted with a flag. Ball is intercepted by Bethea. And Robo check the flag. Probably on Jason David. Going against the Colts. Going against the Colts, a holding call. Defensive holding on Indy. Holding. Defense number 42. Five-yard penalty. 
Automatic first down. Bottom of your screen, here he is against Terry Glenn. Put his hands on the back of the receiver. Pulling the jersey, that's a good, well that's, that's the giveaway for the officials. When they see the jersey being pulled, boy that makes it an easy call. The Cowboys trying to protect Tony Romo. He looked it off. He tried to pump it. Still wasn't that big of a hole. The Colts did not bite. So fortunate that they got the holding call against Jason David. Down here, this is where Marion Barber has been so tough. Seven rushing touchdowns on the season. There he is. First and goal. Barber. Dancing outside and in for the touchdown. I would think it would be hard to be this patient near the goal line. But Marion Barber waits, finally sees a gap, and goes through one touch for the touchdown. And now Vanderjack to tie. And the kick is good. Look at this blocking. Including T.O. T.O. How about that? Game's tied. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the totally new Jeep Compass. Freedom in a whole new dimension. Visa. Go on, live life, and remember that no matter what it takes, life takes Visa. And by non-drowsy Claritin D. For long-lasting nasal congestion relief, live Claritin clear. Well, the Colts are in another close one in the fourth quarter. Game tied, in fact. Wouldn't it be something if Vanderjat it came down to one of his kicks at the very end against his old team? Wilkins running it from the five. And almost able to get into a full sprint until he's met at the 31 by Fowler. The Home Depot SEC on CBS heats up this holiday weekend. LSU Arkansas on Friday. And then Saturday, the Yellow Jackets take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Right here on CBS. Eleven and a half remaining. Manning and that offense have been sitting on that sideline for quite a while. After Dallas put together its longest drive of the season. And a dive is decked by Spears. A loss of three. Marcus Spears from the outside just gets through. What happens? They're trying to go outside, so the guard tries to get to his outside shoulder. He goes, no kidding. I'm going to go up the field quick. Doesn't let the block blocking develop. Tackles a dive for a loss. Second down and 13 with Clark in a slot to the right. With the blitz coming, Manning unloads in time to Reggie Wayne, and it'll be third and two. That was Al Singleton taking off, and Manning felt him bearing down on him. Yeah, it's just an outside linebacker who comes late, but it, it, the timing is not good, and it allows Peyton Manning Enough time just to slide to his left and make a perfect throw. Singleton seeing a lot of action with Greg Ellis lost for the season. That was a huge loss last week. Well, any time you lose your best pass rusher, that's going to affect your defense. But the Cowboys have pressured Manning well today. Third down and two. Fake to Rhodes. Manning fires downfield. Clark and almost picked by Newman. And then off the rebound, Clark had a play at it as well. Incomplete, and the Colts will kick it away. I think Terrence Newman is going to get it. But Roy Williams, playing safety, comes flying over and might knock him off. 
Yep, Roy Williams does knock it out of Terrence Newman's hands. Nice job. He gets both hands around it. Contact by the safety knocks it free. And there's Newman. First time he's been back for a return since getting walloped in that first half. And he's going to stay away from this one. Smith's punt. Flew to the three and bounced in. 60-yard boot, but a net of 40. Romo coming back out. Can the Cowboys drive again? Indianapolis trying to keep the perfect season intact at 9-0. Cowboys trying to get to 6-4 and four and stop this alternating wins and losses that covered now the last two months for seven weeks of the season. From the 20, Romo gets out of the pressure, finds Glenn at the 40. That last drive by the Colts here in the fourth quarter, it's the first time this year where they had the ball tied or behind in the fourth quarter where they didn't go down the field and score to take the lead. Cowboys stopping them on that series. Nice design by the Cowboys on that play. They put Jason David in a bind. Who do you want to cover? Terrell Owens going deep, or are you going to leave Terry Glenn wide open underneath? down at the 40. Oh. Oh. The quick pass going down the field and another hookup with Glenn who's having a huge second half. With Harper and Jackson trying to defend that goes for 33 yards. Well it's a little pump and go by Tony Romo to Terry Glenn. Why does it work? How many times we showed you the one step drop that they're throwing those slant patterns to Terry Glenn, Terrell Owens. So the defenders, they've seen it enough. Nick Harper says, I know that play. And when he makes the effort to break it up, Terry Glenn goes up the field. 71 yards in this half for Glenn. Back to Jones, who hurdles ahead for nine. Thanksgiving Day, we will be in Detroit with the Dolphins coming in. Three straight wins. We'll be there for Miami and Detroit. And it all gets started with a special Thanksgiving Day edition of the NFL Today with JB and the crew coming up this Thursday. The NFL on CBS. Second down and two. Greeny is out of that defensive front at the moment. Close shoulder replacing him. And Jones looks ahead for the first down. Jim, I talked about it. When you get a little tired, sometimes your discipline goes away too. And if you're not disciplined on defense in the National Football League, it creates a running lane for running backs. And right now, the Dallas Cowboys they're finding some running lanes against this defense. Julius Jones with 53 yards in this half. 80 for the game and another handle. And he'll surrender a yard. Rob Morris stepping up to make the hit. Well, that was just attack the line of scrimmage by the Colts defense. Statistically, they're having a rough year, but the one, one of the things I notice when I watch them is that they are willing to be aggressive, more aggressive, Covering guys outside, charging the line of scrimmage, trying to give you negative plays to get you in a situation where you've got to throw it, and then look out. Dwight Freeney, Robert Mathis, good pass rushers. Second and 11. Freeney back out there. Mathis had set down the last play, but he returns. The two defensive ends. Pass play coming over to Jones. Jones inside the 10 to the 5 and driving. Do they give it to him? They say he's down inches shy of the goal line. Would have been Jones' first touchdown at Texas Stadium since 04. What execution by the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Romo just has time to get it away because Dwight Freeney wants the box. The kickback block. The kick outside. What do you think he got in? Let's see. Nope, no. Right. Accurate call. 
Andre Girard, Kyle Kozar. Kozar get a nice block. Yep. And back comes Barber. See if he quick snaps again. Let's do goal with Barber. And Barber is in for the touchdown, and the Cowboys have the lead. Vander Jack to make it a seven point game. And it's good. Barber with two rushing touchdowns in this half. 14 unanswered by the Cowboys for the lead. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by yellowbook.com. Quick, local, reliable. Search online at yellowbook.com. And by Dell. We don't make technology for just anyone. We make it for only one. You. Dell. Purely you. Well, the Cowboys have kept the football 12 and a half of the last 14 minutes of this game. Scoring two touchdowns to take the lead. Andrew Jantz. The kick traveling to the nine. It's Terrence Wilkins work in the middle. And just across the 30. Failure with coming from behind in the fourth quarter. Hit to Rhodes, toss to Rhodes, and beautifully defended by Brady James. The loss of a yard. Manning today, two touchdowns, two interceptions. He had only three interceptions on the season coming in. Pressure coming in, pass, snared out of the air. Look at Wayne spin away and pick up the first. Got away from Anthony Henry for 16 yards. He's double covered on the outside. Peyton Manning throws it in a nice position where he's going to give his guy, Reggie Wayne, a chance to catch it, and he attacks the football, snatches it out of the air, and he gets a couple extra yards. Henry shaken up earlier in this half, but returning and yielding that catch and the first down. The die back in, they fake to him. They're going long, and the catch is made. That's the first play for over 25 yards by the Colts offense in 155 snaps. Goes for 38. Well, this time it's... Marvin Harrison did it. You saw the move off the line of scrimmage. He went fake to the outside, and then when he came inside, it catches Terrence Newman off guard and also Roy Williams, who should have been over the top, helping out, too late getting there. Inside the 20. Still with four on the play clock. Manning now in a hurry. A fake pass. And a whistle first. A whistle first. They bring it to a close. It was caught by UTEC, but of no matter. Bill Parcells threw his red flag. Boy, the red challenge flag. Before the next snap, Dallas is challenging and ruling on the field of the completed pass. Well, even if he doesn't win the, the challenge, the red flag paid off. <laughs> UTEC was able to grab that one, and the defenders, I, everyone's still playing it out as though they had not heard the whistle, ruling it dead. 
Well, they're going back. Marvin Harrison being brought to the ground by a defender. He's got to hold on to this football the whole time. No indication at that end that yep. there was anything other than a clean catch. Let's see this one when he turns around. Well, it doesn't matter as long as it never hits the ground. Doesn't appear to at all. Well, it does not like look like a winning challenge on the way. Yeah, and that could be a calculated move by Bill Parcells. That's where he was hoping for it. Did it hit the ground there, Jim? But it does not look like it. And it's not a bad spot, even if you don't win it. So you waste the timeout, you break the momentum of the Indianapolis Colts, the offense, and, and you let your defense rest up. It's not the first time that Bill Parcells has had to think a, a time or two about something involving Marvin Harrison when he was the coach of the Patriots oh, that's back right. in 1996. He brought Harrison in to Foxborough, took a look at him, and thought for a long time about drafting him. They had the seventh overall pick in that draft, and what a prolific draft it was for receivers. He ended up taking Terry Glenn. Harrison went 19th to the Colts. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands, and Dallas is charged the first timeout. Jim Manson, Phil Sims here at Texas Stadium. I'd like to welcome those of you who have just joined us here. Peyton Manning and the Colts trying to drive to tie this game inside of four minutes remaining. And a reminder that 60 minutes is coming up next, except on the West Coast. With Broadway Joe, you know him well. Coming up. You know him well, good golfer. Joe Namath brought, what's the word for it? Brought a lot of style to being a quarterback. So first down from the 16. Cowboys lose a timeout, losing the challenge. They have one timeout remaining. Colts have all three. The swing pass, it's a die. And he tip goes inside the 10, out of bounds at the 9. Goes for 7. Well, these Colts just keep finding ways to fight back and win close games. They're 9-0, but their average margin of victory is under seven points a game. They keep coming, Jim. We talked about it. They're always on the attack. Second down and three inside the 10. And a dive. Stopped after a gain of one by Adel. I have no doubt if the Colts do not make it here, they will go for it on fourth down. Third and two to go. Takes right, looks middle, lobs it up high, and it's incomplete. Looking for Ben Utech with Roy Williams back on defense. Terrence Newman is the one that makes it happen. He stops the double move to the right side. The outlet receiver is Ben Utech down the middle. Dallas is not fooled. And it is fourth down, and they're quickly back to the line. Not allowing that defense time to adjust. Will create a shift change. Manning, well protected this time. Fires, and it's through the back of the end zone. The Cowboys will take over on downs. Manning wanted a flag. Well, if you're Peyton Manning, there was contact in the end zone. But the two receivers he is looking at to his left, they are both covered. Dallas Clark going to the back. Reggie Wayne coming underneath. The contact that had happened before he let it go, maybe so. Reggie Wayne coming short. Dallas Clark in the back. There is nowhere for Peyton Manning to throw it. 
Romo and the Cowboys take over at the eight. Now can you manufacture first downs? That's what they want to do, of course. Again, that win defense makes some plays. Not here. It's Marion Barber getting all the way out to the 28 with a flag. A face mask on the way. Jason Witten helped free him. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense on the 28. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. Marlon Jackson, safety, comes in. Actually, each of them are grabbing the face mask. But what that does, immediately it turns field position completely around for the Dallas Cowboys. They go from the 8 to the 43. And this Indy defense has been on the field a lot, yes. A whole lot. You made a point of it, what, 12 and a half minutes of the last 14 before that Colts drive. <laughs> Doing Peyton Manning, Tony Romo, 17 of 21. After a rough start, he has been nothing short of magnificent in the second half. He's still staying with Barber instead of Jones. Play action, and Romo lobs it up high, and it's caught by Fasano, the rookie tight end from Notre Dame. What a play by Tony Romo. He makes the fake, and he is full sprinting after he makes it because he knows Dwight Freeney is coming behind him. And Anthony Fasano doesn't panic. I thought it was going to be an overthrow at first, but he keeps his arms down and runs through the football and makes a tough catch. 22 yards for the rookie, his longest catch of the season. And Tony Dungy's having a word with the officials. I was so busy watching Tony Romo just sprint out of the pocket. Did Anthony Fasano make the catch? Indianapolis is challenging the ruling on the field with the runner down by contact. Well, this could be interesting. He catches it. There's a touch. He is down by contact because what they're saying, Anthony Fasano gets up, lays the football on the ground, and the Colts pick it up. There's contact as he's going down to the ground. That's Harper. That's a good shot. You said it, Jim. Nick Harper definitely touches him on the way down. That's a, that is, it's going, Pisano, he hits the turf. Well, what are they really challenging here? Just the spot. No, Jim, when he got up, he put the football down. The Colts picked it up and said he was never touched down. Gotcha. It's our football. And if the replay shows that it's a fumble, <laughs> the possession is free, and clearly the other team picks it up, the Colts could win this challenge. But we have already shown a couple angles. Pretty clear evidence. Where he is down. I love these uh, the, these challenges when you actually root against your team having made a play. So Harper touched him on the way down, but Manning's ready to go just in case with the helmet. You know, one thing about while we have a little moment here during the challenge is Indy attempts to keep the undefeated season going. Even Peyton Manning said it had been a quiet season for us. You know, close games, pulling out these wins, but with Chicago running with them step for step until a couple of weeks ago, by and large, it had felt like a quiet season for this team. Certainly, the talk. The, play, the runner was down by contact. The ruling on the field stands. Indianapolis charged for first timeout. All the talk started to pick up the past two weeks after the Bears lost about can they do this undefeated season thing again? And there he is, Anthony Pisano throws the football down. You see Jason David went over to pick it up. And that's what the Colts were challenging. So the Cowboys will have it at the 36 with 2.20 to go. 
You're right when you talk about the Colts, Jim. They downplay everything, the unbeaten record. They keep it low key. They don't do a lot of interviews. They focus on what they're trying to do. It's just one of the many, many reasons why they've had such great regular seasons the last two years. Barber. And Barber stacked up after it. Kind of three yard game, but we talked to Dungy last night about what was a, his approach be. You know, if they get into December still undefeated, it's still about the division of the conference, the big picture. It's not about undefeated. Well, the Colts last year were the last team to lose. And you look the last six years, these teams that got off to the greatest starts, none of them won the Super Bowl. Well, a 100-yard race. They don't declare a winner, a winner after 40, right? That's right. One thing about that challenge, it did cost the Colts, of course, a timeout. They have one left. Yep, but it's, it's okay. It cost them a timeout. It stopped the clock. They have the two-minute warning and one more, so it's still good use the timeouts. So Barber, again, banging straight ahead for two. And now another quick timeout. Colts used their last one. But Dungy's saying, when we asked him, would your strategy change this year if you got to the point like it did last year? You had basically everything tied up by the time you went against San Diego in, in mid-December. And he said, you know, not really. We're not into building false goals around here. And it, it's just not an enticement for our guys. It's yeah. For us, it's going to be about the playoffs. And, you know, and I, I've mentioned that to a few people. They go, you're kidding. It's such a fine line. Uh, if they played everybody last year to go for the undefeated season, they lose in the first round of the playoffs, well, you should have rested your players. And, you know, Tom Moore, offensive coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts, he said it best. After the fact, we're all geniuses. And 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 it's 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 the ultimate armchair quarterback question or decision the Colts convinced they know how to operate their team. I think they've shown us they're pretty good at it, and you've got to trust them with their judgment. Cowboys have brought in Patrick Creighton as a third receiver, the big third down play on the way. First down here would all but close it out. Plus, they've got Barber lined up here at the bottom of your screen. Five wide receivers, would they try a quarterback draw from this situation? Romo throws, and the catch, good for the first down. Glenn just across the necessary yardage. And we reach the two-minute warnings, and the Colts cannot stop it again. Terry Glenn picks up the first. We're back here at Texas Stadium, and again, 60 minutes coming up next, except for those of you on the West Coast. Joe Namath tells his story, his life in football and after football. Cowboys can just take a knee now. And this for Bill Parcells is one of these. He talked about getting over the hump. The, the breakthrough win, if you will, that he's desired now in his fourth year with this program. Now, they've got to come back in four days and play again on Thanksgiving against Tampa. But this is... A monumental step for what Parcells is trying to achieve here in Dallas. Yeah, he's trying to get on a run. That's a, that's what it is. Separate a little bit. Now this makes him six and four. Tony Romo has done what he has wanted out of the uh, by changing quarterbacks. And Jim, if you watched him here today, once he got used to the speed and the pass pressure by the Indianapolis Colts, Tony Romo was almost perfect, especially. The last three times they had the football. Well, last week he completed his last ten attempts. Today he completes his last nine passes. You saw Staubach won in his first start at Texas Stadium. It was the first game at Texas Stadium. Aikman lost in his Texas Stadium debut, but Romo is going to be a winner today. Well, you can see the players, their reaction, even the crowd. They haven't left. They're still here. They know that this maybe gives the the Dallas Cowboys a chance to get to where they want to go, to, to get them started in that direction. That's what it is, just a good start. One more snap, and 
What's that tradition down in Miami? The old 72 Dolphins will be gathering tonight. Popping up, a little champagne. Pop that champagne. The Cowboys hand the Colts their first loss of the season. Manning and Romo. They were 1-2 in the quarterback ratings coming in, and Romo's was higher today. Fourteen unanswered to close it out for Dallas on Marion Barber touchdown plunges. For Phil Sims, this is Jim Nance saying so long from Texas Stadium. The final score is 21 to 14. Dallas 60 minutes is coming up next, followed by Amazing Race, Cold Case, and without a trace. Well, it was hard hitting from the start. Cowboys get an interception run back couple of major drives in the late going. They beat Indy today. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of Super Bowl 41. We'll see you Thanksgiving Day from Detroit.